Okay, so in today's session, we're going to be doing two very basic, basic compositing shots. First one is a dirt blast. Let's take that back to the beginning. Dirt blast behind some railings, like so. Colour correcting it in, masking it, etc. Focus matching. And the second one is just an image of a teacup on a table. But obviously, um, we've got reflections down here. And we've got a little bit of an issue on the side in this one, but not to worry. And um, we're colour correcting it in and we'll focus match it as well. Okay, <clears throat> so we're going to jump right in. Let's drag this footage down to the new composition layer. And this is footage of a patio. I'm going to drag my dirt charge on top. This is from the Action Essentials Video Copilot Pack, by the way. In case you're interested, they're very good. I recommend uh, investing in them. And this is our dirt charger that stands. Now we want this to be behind this patio, but first of all I want to match a perspective, so I'm going to go for a corner pin, so just type in your facts and presets, corner pin, click, <coughs> excuse me, and drag it on. Now I can move each corner, like so, to try and match this perspective, so I'll drag the bottom two to this bottom bit of the, um, what should we call it, the patio, and I'm going to get my other two and just drag them to the top of this fence just so I can match the perspective up like so and then I'm going to shift drag and click and drag them up again so just have this one a little bit higher than that there we go now I want to move this down because I don't want this little bit you know just over the edge and I think something like that's going to be fine yeah maybe let's just scale it up a touch so 110 and I can take it up. There we go. Now, if I were to start masking this layer, like so, notice that, you know, as I move these mask points, it's actually affecting it up here, and that's because it doesn't like the corner pin. So I'm going to delete that mask, and what I'm going to do is pre-compose this dirt charge. So, Ctrl Shift C, Stock Dirt, I call it and make sure move all attributes into new composition is ticked click OK so next what you can do is with the pen tool selected and this layer selected is you can start clicking in here and masking off this layer now I'm going to do mine quite rough I'm not going to spend a lot of time making these points so there you go as one done and again as I said I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing mine so you can spend a lot more doing yours a lot more time but I don't know just click in here around the pole come down side down side again there's that one done and now this one come over here up here let's undo that one that was a bit squiff click click come across, come across now. This one could do with a little bit of adjusting, you can always come back and adjust them. Um, and let's add a point in here. And there we go, something like that. Okay, and there's this one up here as well we've got to do. Again, I'm taking not a lot of time to do mine, but you can do yours a lot neater, obviously. So come up, come back, click in there like so there we go right now that we got all these masks if we hit M with our layer selected we've got them all here I'm going to shift click them all and go to subtract so now wherever those masks are it gets rid of the um, stock footage layer which is cool so now this is what we've got our stock footage behind if we were to click this button by here toggle mask and shape visibility it turns those lines on and off so we can see what's going on. So if we come in here we can see it's actually quite harsh. So if we double click M on our layer, it gives excuse me, it gives us all these um, options now. I want to select them all and give them a feather of about one. And that makes it a little bit softer. And then maybe mask expansion I'll go minus one. And that just bleeds it in a little bit, but it can sometimes do it too much, so I'm just gonna set mine to zero. If you want to do yours, have a play around, see what works best really. 
Um, now I've done that, I'm going to close this down and we want to start colour correcting. Okay, So what I'm going to use is curves, click and drag that on. And it's a little bit too warm at the moment for my scene, so I'm going to go into the reds and decrease some of that red out of there. And it goes a little bit more sort of green in tune with the background. I want to go to blue, maybe just get rid of some of the blues, just click and drag very slightly. Uh, it's looking a little bit too green, so we'll take some of it out. Maybe put a little, yeah, take some of it out. And I think I'm going to come back to the red and get rid of a bit more red again. Okay, that's starting to look a little bit better colour wise. So if we turn this on and off, you can see the adjustments we've made. Now, the other one I'm going to use is levels. So click and drag it onto this and have, just have a play around with. I'll put white. Um, no, let's have a look. Input white. And the black levels. Something like this. Let's reset this actually. Let's have a play around with these until you get something which is looking like it fits a little better in the scene. Okay, it's taken some of the dark values out of, out of there, some dark values over there, a little too much. And the other one I'm going to play with is um, blur. So I want to blur this slightly, I'll use a Gaussian blur, drag it on and I want it, to, you know, if you look at the trees, how out of focus they are, and even how out of focus the edge of these tiles are, those chunks are a little bit too in focus. So I think I had earlier a value of 5 in here, maybe chuck it up to 6, and turn it on and off, and compare it to before. Yeah, it's a nice little change there. So if we turn all of these effects off, we can see how far we've come. Okay, so I'm going to give mine a little playthrough. I'll set my end point to here. And let's give it a RAM preview. Okay, so the, we've only done a, ver a few very, very, very basic techniques. We've um, altered the perspective for the dirt blast to match the scene. We've masked it behind certain elements. We have um, done some very, very simple colour correction. We have um, altered the curves and levels to colour correct it and blur it into the background. So, you know, very, very simple stuff, but, you know, it's made it made a lot of difference to just, you know, banging it on top, obviously. Um, there's one adjustment from looking at that that I think I'm going to make. Um, let's just let it cache all the way in first, and then let's have a look. Okay. Right. So I think what I'm going to do, my dirt charges, it looks a little bit high for me. So you can see it looks as if the grass is there when it, when it obviously goes down a lot more and then it just explodes from there. So what I'm going to do is go into my stock dirt and move this down a touch more, somewhere to about there. And now let's come back in. And now it's going to be a lot less. Let's play this back at about a third so it goes quicker. But you know, it's a lot less now. So it looks as if the... Um, dirt charge happens further down and you know you can't see the grass at all so you'd expect it to be you know taking place by about here so I'm just matching that up and then that sells it a lot more than it did before so there you go okay so that was the first one we're gonna move on to the second one now I'm just gonna save up and let's move on to the second one so the second one was the teacup one so Let's get my footage and click and drag it down. And so this is just a shot of a coffee table. And the image I used was this image. Now it's not the most high quality image, but this is just all I'm using this for is just to kind of show you how to do, you know, very, very basic compositing. So I'm going to drag this over. Obviously, you can see everything's on a bit of a tilt. If you look at the horizon line, this tablet or iPad, whatever it is, 
is at a bit of a slant because the cam was a bit slanted so we'll match that let's get our rotation up and just rotate it like so something like that and let's scale it up touch now if you ever get lumbered with an image like this a nice little technique to get rid of that black background is an effect called extract so click and drag it on and then you've got black point by here and if you zoom in we'll have a look and see how it's doing getting rid of all those black bits and you can also ad adjust the black softness but mm, that's fine by there okay cool uh, actually not cool it's gotten rid of some of the bits down here so you know bring it back a touch like that and it brings back some of the edges you know you, you can spend more time you can crank it up more so it gets rid of rid of um, sorry wrong one rid of these edges and then you can mask certain bits back bits back in if you want but I'm just gonna go with um, let's have a quick look I'm just gonna go with black point I'm gonna go with 115 look as if it'll do me or 107 okay something like that there we go and especially if we zoomed out so we've already given it a little bit of a rotation so it looks as if it's sitting in there. Next thing we're going to do is go to curves and drag our curves on there. Now it's just too white at the moment. If we actually, what would be a good idea is to drag it to the next whitest thing. So this sheet of paper is actually, for the scene, it's actually quite blue. So we want to match the whites to that. So let's go to the reds. Let's take out some of the reds. Let's go into the greens. Take a touch of them out. Let's go into the blues and push them up a little bit. So we're getting something similar to this. Let's go to the blue highlights. Push some of them in. And let's go into the green highlights. Something like that. Go into the red highlights and bring them down to give it a touch of cyan. Okay, and we're getting it, if we turn this on and off, you can see we're getting it closer to the other whites that are in the scene. Alright, so let's drag this back over here. Okay, and the other thing I want to do is have a look at the levels. Click and drag them on. Let's drag this back over here, because the white highlights at the moment are a little bit too bright. So let's go to input white, drag them down a bit, mute them down just a touch, and output white, that leaves them alone, and um, let's have a look at the shadows in comparison to just general shadows, let's give it a little bit more, there you go, something like that, I may want to go into the blues and see if I can give it bit more of a cyan touch. I'll do that within the curves I think if I were to. I may come back into the curves and just take a little bit more of that red out. Just like that. Right, anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Um, so, drag this back over, place it somewhere like that. And um, what I next want to do is, if we look at the grain, that looks as if when we zoom out this, there's some sort of grain on the table, um, and that grain's quite blurred. Even if we were to compare it to this piece of paper, which is further back in the scene, we do need to chuck a we do need to chuck a blur on this. So let's go with a Gaussian blur. Where was it? There it is. Chuck it on there. And I think four. No, it's too much. Um, let's go with two and turn it on and off. I think that's giving it something. So let's click and drag it back to about there. Now, um, next thing we want to do <coughs> is we want to give it some sort of reflection. See, this paper has got a little bit of reflection. This has got a reflection here. These books have got reflections. So we want to give this one. Um, so. 
if we duplicate this and with the one underneath we're just gonna flip it like so and put it beneath and I just think yeah something like that should be okay maybe make make it let's make it a little bit more and then something like that so you've got you know loads of different blending modes you can play around with in here I'm just gonna have a check of which one I used earlier I used oh no, it's, ah, it's, it's in another file I think actually don't worry about it we'll go with let's have a look hard light screen screen doing lighten and no I like soft light actually yeah, I'm going I'm to go with soft light, I think. I think this reflection for this would match how those reflections are looking for that. Right, so now we've got our um, sort of duplicate beneath with this soft light blending mode on. Obviously, because we duplicated it, it's come with all the colour correction, which is good. And it's also come with a blur, because we blurred this one. But for our reflection, we want our reflection to be a lot more blurred. So I'm going to go with something around 6 pixels to start with, and I think maybe... Uh, maybe five, come back to five. And what I want to do is I want to get a mask now. And I want to put the mask around this coffee cup. Something like that, because I don't want this tea bit to show. But um, yeah, I'm going to mask that roughly around there. And I'm going to come down to my mask and I'm going to do subtract. Okay. So I've got these points over here and this point by here. I'm going to feather this mask now. Something like that. So it's got a gradual sort of fade off. Okay. Oh, let's undo that. And then just move my points so it's got a very nice gradual fade. Okay, and for that bit, that is it. You know, it's got a nice fade off by there. You can keep on going in and alter altering that and stuff, but um, that's all I want to show you how to make something really fit in the scene thinking about reflections and stuff like that and how it would interact with its surroundings as well as colour correction and focus matching so cheers for tuning into that one I'll see you in the next session